Hi, it's Katrina. Why did ancient people love making such enormous megastructures out of stone? It's a good thing they did though, because for many civilizations, it's the only thing they left behind. In today's video, I'll introduce you to some ancient landscapes where colossal stones defy the laws of physics and intricate carvings hint at forgotten technologies. From the rock ship of Masuda, seemingly ready to set sail through time, to the Al Nazla rock, sliced so precisely it looks like it was cut by a laser, these megastructures challenge our understanding of history. So be sure to subscribe and let me know your favorite in the comments. The Floating Rock of Japan Japan's colossal megalithic mystery is called Ishi no Hoden. It's an ancient stone that looks like a massive old-fashioned television, remember those, floating over a pond in the city of Takasago, Hyogo Prefecture. Sounds wild, right? This giant rock is almost 20 feet high and weighs as much as 500 tons. And of course, there are some fascinating legends and myths surrounding this strange monument. But first things first, how on earth did they build this thing? Truth is, nobody knows. There are no signs of tools or carvings. Some believe it's the work of the gods Ukununushi and Sukunabikona. According to legend, they accepted a challenge to build a castle in one night, but got interrupted by a rebellious local god. What a bummer! Ishinohoden is allegedly all they managed to complete. It's carved from hyaloclastite, a type of volcanic stone that formed 70 million years ago. Imagine chiseling away at that! The stone sits in Hodenyama, a quarry area known for its unique rocks. And fun fact, Ishino Hoden is bigger than any stone that was used in the construction of the Great Pyramid of Giza. Why does it look like it's floating? It's all thanks to its clever design. The stone sits over a pond that never dries up, even in droughts. The waters rise and fall with the tide add to the floating illusion. Some even say that this water has magical properties and can cure diseases. Maybe that's why people keep coming back. Now let's talk theories. Some people think this stone could actually be an ancient spaceship, or maybe some type of anti-gravity device. And who knows, maybe they're right. The lack of tool marks suggests that it was created with advanced technology. According to some, it was made with help from some friendly aliens. Or perhaps it really was carved by the gods. Some estimates place Ishino Hoden as being over 2,000 years old. But honestly, that's just an educated guess. For all anyone knows, this ancient stone could be much, much older. Based on its style and materials, it is generally believed to date back to the Jomon period, which lasted from around 14,000 to 300 BC. This would make Ishi no Hoden one of the oldest megalithic structures in Japan, the forgotten stones of the Aswan Quarry. The ancient Egyptians were masters of rock. Not the music, of course, but actual stone. Deep in the Aswan Quarry lies the unfinished obelisk, a massive stone that could have been the largest obelisk ever. It weighs a whopping 1,168 tons. To put that into perspective, that's about the weight of 200 elephants. But this stone was ultimately abandoned because of a crack. Someone spent months carving this giant only to realize that it's cracked. Talk about a stone-cold heartbreak. But why was this thing so enormous? I mean, have you ever wondered why the Egyptians needed such massive stones? The answer might surprise you. The granite from Aswan was the preferred material for many of Egypt's grand monuments. They used it for the casing stones on pyramids, sarcophagi, and colossal statues. They even transported these giant stones hundreds of miles down the Nile. So next time you think your commute is tough, Picture yourself hauling a 70-ton stone block and count yourself lucky. So how did they carve and move these gigantic stones? Well, it depends on who you ask. One popular theory involves diorite balls. Diorite is a hard rock, slightly tougher than granite. Ancient workers could have pounded away at the granite with these balls for months to shape the stones. Doesn't that sound exhausting? Engineer Christopher Dunn believes it would take even longer, considering the cramped conditions. But maybe the ancient workers had arms of steel. Now here's where it gets fun. Some people think that the ancient Egyptians might have used advanced technology to cut and transport these stones. Theories range from sound waves to alien machinery. What if the ancient Egyptians used lasers or invented some kind of stone-cutting machine long before we thought possible? 
It's a wild idea, but those strange scoop-like tool marks on the stones don't exactly match the pounding method I mentioned earlier. Oh, did I forget to tell you about those marks? That's right. Markings on this incomplete obelisk might just be evidence of advanced machinery. Could it be that the Egyptians had some secret technology we have yet to discover? Maybe. What's even more puzzling, though, is why they never used the unfinished obelisk for anything else, even after it cracked. Maybe it was considered sacred, or it was thought to be charged with some ancient power, or perhaps the crack was a bad omen. Either way, the obelisk remains in the quarry, a giant reminder of ancient Egypt's incredible craftsmanship. The Saiwite monolith. Deep in the Peruvian Andes, there is a rock that's more than just a big, boring boulder. It's called the Saiwite monolith. It's a massive stone covered with over 200 carvings of animals like reptiles, felines, shellfish, frogs. The rock is also surrounded by terraces, ponds, and canals. But what's it all about? That's the million dollar question. The Saiwite monolith is located at Saiwite, an ancient archaeological site in the Apurimac region. But it's not exactly what you'd call a classic Inca site. In fact, it's more of a hidden gem with a bit of an identity crisis. While the Inca Empire thrived between the 15th and 16th centuries, Saiwite has a mysterious vibe with many unanswered questions. The Saiwite monolith is about 7 feet long and 13 feet wide. It sits atop a terraced hill called Concacha, where it might have once been part of a grand sanctuary. Although with its mysterious past, it's hard to tell if this stone was always here or if it was moved, perhaps by looters with a serious sense of adventure. So what's up with the carvings? The monolith features both geometric patterns and zoomorphic designs. Some people think the animals might symbolize different things. For example, the jaguar might represent the Inca capital of Cusco. Could the ancient Peruvians have been using their rock as a giant stone version of a city map? The geometric designs might be more than just doodles. Some researchers believe they could represent terraces, ponds, and irrigation systems, basically a mini version of the landscape. And if this is true, the monolith could have been used as a model to test and plan water flow for ancient Inca projects. Maybe it was the ancient equivalent of a high-tech simulation model. If any of you have seen Disney's The Emperor's New Groove, this thing looks mysteriously like Cuscotopia. Could just be a coincidence, but maybe not. Other theories are more mystical in nature. Some folks think the monolith was used for religious rituals. With natural springs nearby, it's possible that the carvings were connected to water deities or rituals aimed at bringing rain. The rock may have even been used as a holy tool for summoning storms. Was it an example of sophisticated engineering or a sacred stone for water gods? For all anyone knows, the Saiwite monolith could hold the secret to ancient Inca technology. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. And now for number nine, but first, it's shout out time. I want to give a big thank you to Darren Cole and Joanna Mendez for supporting this channel. We wouldn't be here without you guys. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this. The Sakafuneshi Stone. In the heart of Asuka, Japan, lies the mysterious Sakafuneshi Stone, a relic from the transformative Asuka period between 538 and 710 AD. This era was like Japan's version of a major life makeover, introducing Buddhism and consolidating imperial power. Among the many ancient wonders in Asuka, the Sakafuneshi Stone stands out for its mysterious origins and purpose. This hefty stone, weighing around 100 tons, is a flat slab with two basins and a series of channels carved into its surface. Imagine a giant stone pancake decorated with fancy designs, except this pancake might have been an ancient tool. But what exactly was it used for? Well, that's where the fun theories come in. One popular idea is that the stone was used for polishing rice, because sakafune translates to rice wine ship in Japanese. Polishing rice is a real thing, by the way. I looked it up. Polishing rice is when you roll it all around to get rid of the outer layers of the rice grain, leaving it nice and white. It's crucial for making sake. The higher the polishing percentage, the more refined and expensive the sake usually is. Another theory suggests a more spiritual purpose, like water purification rituals. Perhaps ancient priests used the stone in ceremonies, making it an ancient altar of sorts. But wait, it gets even more interesting. 
Some think this stone might have been an astronomical tool, given the Asuka period's fascination with the cosmos and calendar systems. Could the channels and basins align with celestial events? Another cool idea is that the carvings on the stone represent a topographical map of the surrounding area, turning it into an ancient GPS. So what's the truth behind the Sakafuneshi stone? Well, unfortunately, archaeologists and historians are still scratching their heads. Modern scientific techniques like 3D scanning and elemental analysis are being used to study it, hoping to unlock its secrets. But for now, the mystery remains. The Sakafuneshi stone isn't just an archaeological puzzle, it's also a piece of Japan's rich cultural heritage. Visitors flock to Asuka to marvel at this ancient artifact and speculate about its purpose. It's like the ultimate historical mystery tour. Preservation efforts are currently in place to ensure that this stone remains intact for future generations to study and appreciate. Whether it was used for making rice wine, performing rituals, studying the stars, or mapping the land, the Sakafuneshi stone is one of Japan's most intriguing relics. The Baalbek Stone In Lebanon's historic Beka Valley lies the ancient city of Heliopolis, now known as Baalbek. Here, the Romans achieved some amazing feats, including building the 2,000-year-old Temple of Jupiter on top of three massive stones called the Trilithon. But the real mystery lies not far from these temples, where three other gigantic stones sit half-buried in a limestone quarry. They are known as the Stone of the Pregnant Woman, the Stone of the South, and the Forgotten Stone. But what purpose did these enormous stones serve for the Romans, and how did they move them? The Stone of the Pregnant Woman, weighing about 1,000 tons, was the first to be discovered because it was never fully buried. The Stone of the South weighs in at 1,242 tons. It was found in the same quarry in the 1990s. And just when you think they couldn't find anything bigger, archaeologists discovered the Forgotten Stone in 2014. This monster of a stone weighs a whopping 1,497 tons, making it the largest known stone ever quarried. So how did the Romans, without modern machinery, manage to extract and transport these colossal stones? One common method they used involved chalk lines and wedges. They would draw an outline on the rock face, insert wedges along these lines, and then hammer them in until the rock split. The Romans were basically playing a high-stakes game of rock-splitting Jenga. Transporting these stones was another challenge. The stones had to travel half a mile from the quarry to the temple site. Luckily, it was slightly downhill, a small blessing for the movers. They likely used a pulley system with capstans, a kind of revolving cylinder attached to pulley blocks on both sides of the load. Moving these stones would have required 32 men operating 16 machines, meaning a total of 512 men exerting the power of more than 10 tons. Who needs the gym when you're doing labor like this for work? But why go to all this trouble? The temples at Baalbek, including the largest temple of the Roman world, the Temple of Jupiter, needed strong foundations to support their vast structures. The Romans were nothing if not ambitious, and their engineering prowess is evident in the towering pillars and massive stones they left behind. The origins and purpose of these stones have inspired many theories and legends. Some locals believe that giants, or even jinns, mythical spirits, built the temples. Others think a pregnant woman tricked the people into feeding her by promising to reveal how to move the stones. Spoiler alert, she just wanted food and had no idea how to follow through with her promise. The Megalithic Gate of Ha'amonga Amaui In the heart of the Tonga Islands stands one of the strangest megalithic monuments in the Pacific. It's called the Ha'amonga Amaui, also known as the Burden of Maui. Tonga is a Polynesian kingdom made up of nearly 200 islands, with about a quarter of them inhabited. The first settlers are believed to have arrived around 1500 BC, with the oldest occupied site found on the island of Tonga Tapu, home to the Ha'amonga Amaui. This monument consists of two giant stone pillars with a third stone resting on the top, forming a massive gate. Looking at this thing, you might be reminded of Stonehenge. This structure was built around 1200 by a Tongan king, possibly as the entrance to his royal compound, 
It stands about 17 feet high. It's also 19 feet long and four and a half feet wide, with each stone weighing 30 to 40 tons. To put that into perspective, lifting these stones would be like lifting 20 average cars all stacked on top of each other. So why was this gate built? One theory suggests that it symbolized the brotherhood of the king's sons. But there's an even cooler story. According to Tongan legend, the gate was built by the demigod Maui, the same Maui from Polynesian folklore, and the same one featured in Disney's Moana. The story goes that Maui and his brothers, who had superhuman strengths, carried these giant stones on a massive canoe. They were like the original superheroes of the Pacific. But wait, there is more. In 1967, the king of Tonga, Taufa Ahau Tupo IV, suggested that the ancient megalith had astronomical significance. The king thought that it possibly aligned with the solstices and the equinoxes. However, there is no solid evidence to back this up, so it's still up for debate. Could the Ha'amonga Maui be even older than we think? Some believe it might be much older than 800 years, since it looks like other prehistoric trilithons around the world. Fun fact, a trilithon is an ancient stone monument made up of two large upright stones that support another stone that is placed on top horizontally. They look like gates made of solid rock with no apparent purpose. At least not to us. The Al Nazla Rock In Saudi Arabia's Taima Oasis stands the mysterious Al Nazla Rock Formation a geological wonder that has puzzled scientists and captivated visitors for centuries. This incredible site features two massive sandstone boulders, each around 20 feet tall. The boulders are also perfectly balanced on natural pedestals with a smooth vertical split running between them. In fact, this split is so precise that it looks like it was made with a laser beam. And since this place dates back 4,000 years, you know that conspiracy theorists are absolutely obsessed with it. But what really split the boulder in half? Well, perhaps not surprisingly, one theory suggests that aliens might be behind the mysterious split. Some imaginative minds and social media theorists propose that extraterrestrials with advanced technology could have sliced the rock with a laser. If aliens are responsible, they clearly have an unusual taste in rock formations. Another explanation is that the rocks are situated on a fault line. According to this theory, the movement of tectonic plates caused a weak spot in the rock, resulting in the split. It's as if the rocks were simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. A third possibility involves the freeze-thaw cycle. If water seeped into the rock, froze, and then expanded, it could have created a crack. And over thousands of years, this crack might have grown into the smooth split we see today. But just how likely is that to happen? There is also a theory that ancient humans might have caused the split. Given that the rock has ancient petroglyphs, it's possible that an unknown civilization was responsible. Maybe they used tools to create the split as part of their artistic expression. Maybe these ancient people were the original rock stars. The Al Nazla rock features petroglyphs like an image of a person leading an Arabian horse. This breed, which is still around today, dates back long before the rocks were split. To better understand the formation of Al Nazla, scientists are using geologic survey techniques, 3D imaging, and mineralogical analysis. These studies aim to gather more data on the rock's composition and the environmental history of the area. Hopefully, we'll find out what could have led to such a precise split. What do you think caused it? Let me know in the comments! The Ancient Wall of Arwad on the eastern coast of the Mediterranean, there is an island called Arwad that's a real head-scratcher for historians and architects. Why? Because it boasts an ancient megalithic wall that once encircled the entire island. That's no small feat. Whoever built this wall made it so huge that it could make even the Great Wall of China do a double-take. Arwad is the only inhabited island in Syria and sits just a few miles from the port city of Tartus. Historically, this island was a buzzing hub of activity. The Phoenicians settled there around the early 2nd millennium BC. And as they expanded, they turned it into a powerful independent kingdom known as Arvad Aradus, or Jazirat. In other words, this place was a pretty big deal. So what's up with this gigantic wall? Experts are still losing sleep at night over how ancient people managed to build it. The wall was constructed using enormous stones weighing several tons each. But how did they manage to move these massive blocks? Did they have super strength? Did they have the help of giants? The wall wasn't just for show. 
It was practical, too. It protected the island from invaders and the sea. There was also a fancy artificial harbor on the east side, which was perfect for the island's bustling trade activities. The people of Arwad had a mighty navy, and their ships were famous enough to be mentioned in Egyptian and Assyrian monuments. Talk about making waves. Today, the wall is mostly a ruin, with only a few stones left standing. But these remnants still hint at the incredible craftsmanship of the ancient builders. The stones were stacked with such precision that it's like they had ancient architects with a PhD in stone stacking. And some of the stones are so large that they make an average-sized person look like an ant. Now this raises a big question. Why did they use such massive stones instead of smaller ones that would have been easier to handle? Some believe the answer might be tied to the importance of the wall and the island's strategic position. After all, when you're guarding an entire island and your trade routes, you want your wall to be as sturdy as possible. But interestingly, Arwad's megalithic wall isn't a unique phenomenon. Similar ancient structures appear all over the globe. Ancient civilizations were far more advanced than we sometimes give them credit for. As Graham Hancock puts it, we are a species with amnesia. Puma Punku Puma Punku, which translates to Door of the Puma, is an ancient site in Bolivia that has fascinated people for ages. This place, dating back to between 500 and 600 AD, is a hotspot for conspiracy theorists. Why? Because the massive stone structures there are so precisely cut that it seems like only advanced technology, or maybe even aliens, could have made them. It's located about 45 miles from La Paz in the city of Tiwanaku. Puma Punku sits high in the Andes Mountains, more than 12,000 feet above sea level. According to Inca tradition, this is the place where the world was created. The site is filled with smooth stone structures featuring perfect right angles and expertly fitted joints. Some stones weigh several tons. They've stood the test of time, despite being scattered and broken now. This place looks as though a giant left their building blocks out in the rain. So how did these stones get tossed around? Was it a massive game of Jenga gone wrong? Researchers have been trying to figure this out for years. But thanks to archaeologist Alexei Vranich from the University of California, Berkeley, we now have a virtual reconstruction of what Puma Punku might have looked like in its prime. Vranich likened the ruins to a giant Lego set, which archaeologists use 3D printed models to understand better. The precision of Puma Punku's stonework has led to wild theories, including the idea that aliens with laser technology were involved. These theories aren't just modern inventions. Even Spanish conquistadors describe the site as a wondrous, though unfinished, building with gateways and windows carved from single blocks. Archaeologists like David Childress have pointed out that the massive chunks of granite seem to have been scattered around like toys, possibly by a cataclysm. Theories about the age of Puma Punku are also up for debate. Austrian archaeologist Arthur Poznanski suggested that the site could be as old as 15,000 years based on its alignment with the stars. He proposed this after World War II, and this idea has been kept alive by modern writers like Graham Hancock. But one big question remains. How did primitive people create such smooth and flawless right angles and circular holes with just hammers and chisels? Modern technology like diamond-tipped saws and drills are needed to replicate this work today. So could ancient aliens have visited Puma Punku and left behind their advanced technology? Skeptics like Brian Dunning argue against this. Instead, he suggests that the stones might have been poured using concrete. However, no evidence supports this theory. So the mystery of Puma Punku lives on. Scientists still can't explain how these structures were built, and no one has a solid answer to the who, what, when, and why. Some speculate that the use of psychoactive plants by the ancient people of Tiwanaku might have inspired their construction methods. Or maybe the plants helped them contact beings with advanced knowledge. I don't know. While we may never know the truth, Puma Pungu continues to fascinate and baffle those who study it. The Secrets of Ollantaytambo Let's step back in time and discover Ollantaytambo, a breathtaking ancient Inca temple and fortress. This hidden gem lies at the northwestern end of Peru's sacred valley, and it's packed with history, mystery, and jaw-dropping views. Locals call it Ollanta, located about 60 miles north of Cusco. This place is home to some of the best-preserved Inca ruins. 
and it has quite the story to tell. Ollantaytambo was the estate of Emperor Pachacuti. He essentially had a ceremonial center and a whole town just for himself. During the Spanish conquest, the leader of the Inca resistance, Manco Inca Yupanqui, turned it into a fortress. Amazingly, in 1536, this was the only place in Peru where the Inca managed to repel the Spanish army. Sadly though, the Spanish came back with more forces and the Inca had to retreat to Vilcabamba. But hey, they put up a good fight. Built in the 1400s, the ruins of Ollantaytambo are a mix of religious and strategic importance. The large fortress known as Temple Hill and the Temple of the Sun with its giant stones are spectacular. These stones even have ancient symbol-like marks. Climbing the 200 steps to the top lets you see several fountains and temples up close. It's not easy though, and tourists are often struggling to get to the top. The air is thin here, and it's easy to get out of breath. Besides everything else already going on, there is a mysterious face carved into the cliff above the valley. It's not 100% clear if it's an actual carved face or if it's a natural formation that looks like a face. The Incas were also masters at storing things. By that, I mean they built several storehouses out of field stones on the surrounding hills. The high altitude with its colder temperature and more wind helped preserve the contents against decay. These storehouses were basically refrigerators that worked without electricity. One of the coolest parts of Ollantaytambo is the wall of the six monoliths. These huge stones were moved from a quarry on the opposite side of the Urubamba River. But wait, how did the Inca move them about six kilometers across the river and up a hill? Your guess is as good as mine. Maybe they had ancient cranes or used secret techniques that we know nothing about. Or maybe they just used ropes and a bunch of people. Below the ruins lies the old town of Ollantaytambo. The town sits on Inca foundations and has well-preserved cobblestone streets lined with adobe walls. Canals still bring water from the mountains, just like the old days. The town is divided into blocks or canchas and each house several families. Some descendants still live there and run small shops today. The locals are ready for tourists dressed in brightly colored clothes and selling everything from alpaca ponchos to magnets to bags, you name it. So if you're planning a trip to Peru, this place should definitely be added to your itinerary. The Rock Ship of Masuda The Rock Ship of Masuda looks like it might have just crash-landed from space. With its smooth surfaces and angular cuts, this massive stone has been a mystery for hundreds of years. Although it resembles something straight out of a sci-fi movie, its origins and purpose are a mystery. The Rock Ship of Masuda, also known as Masuda no Iwafune, is located in Kashihara, Nara Prefecture, in the serene hills of Japan. This area is known for its intriguing carved granite stones, many of which resemble human figures and animals. The carvings date back to around the 7th century AD during the late Kofun period. They offer a captivating window into ancient Japanese artistry. So what's the big deal about this specific rock? Well, it's not just any rock. The rock ship measures an impressive 36 feet long, 26 feet wide, and it's 15 feet high. That's about the size of a luxury tour bus. Imagine trying to fit that into your backyard. Made from granite, which is notoriously tough to cut and carve, the rock features a unique shape with square-cut indents and a scale-like pattern on its side. The giant carved stone also resembles a ship, and that's where its nickname comes from. People have come up with all sorts of theories about why this rock was carved. Some suggest it was used for stargazing or astronomical observations. Others think it might have had a spiritual purpose, possibly related to funerals or ceremonies celebrating the dead. And of course, there are also people who claim aliens had something to do with this monolith. But here's the kicker. No one really knows for sure. The true story behind the rock ship of Musuda remains shrouded in mystery. Was it an ancient spaceport for aliens, a giant ceremonial rock, or just an elaborate piece of art? If you have any idea of what this thing could be or what its purpose was, let me know in the comments below. Megaliths of the Ural Mountains In the mysterious Ural Mountains of Russia, there lies a hidden treasure, ancient megalithic structures. These megaliths come in various forms like dolmens, menhirs, and even a large cultic complex on Vera Island. But despite their impressive presence, little is known about who built them or why they were constructed. 
The Ural Mountains stretch from north to south through western Russia, reaching the northern border of Kazakhstan. These mountains are about 250 to 300 million years old, making them one of the world's oldest mountain ranges. They are also known as a treasure box of minerals, including iron, copper, gold, and gems. In the middle Urals, you'll find numerous dolmens. What's a dolmen, you ask? Picture two or more vertical stones supporting a flat stone on top. They can be simple or complex and are often thought to be ancient tombs, though there is no solid evidence to prove it. After all, these things date back to 5000 to 3300 BC, so it's hard to find human remains going back almost 7000 years. In the Urals, there are two main styles of dolmens. Stone plate dolmens, which are mounds of stones with attached chambers, and boulder dolmens, made from large boulders forming a chamber. These ancient chambers are full of secrets. What were our ancestors doing in these places? Now let's talk about menhirs. Menhirs are single vertical stones that can stand alone or in groups. In the Urals, they are found near ancient settlements or cemeteries. Some are arranged in rows up to 60 feet long. And others, however, form circular structures like the one found in Akunovo village, which has eight menhirs in a huge circle. The real showstopper, though, is the megalithic complex on Vera Island in Lake Turgoyak. Dating back to the Neolithic period, also known as the Copper Age, these structures are creatively named Megalith No. 1, No. 2, No. 3, Vera Island 9, and Vera Island 4. I'm sorry, but these names don't transmit the mysticism and intrigue that we're trying to convey here. Megalith No. 1 is the largest, measuring 52 by 30 feet, with a long entrance, a central hall, and two chambers. It even has windows and sculptures of bulls and wolves. Some believe it once served as a temple. Megalith No. 2 is carved into a rocky slope with two chambers connected by a corridor, while No. 3 consists of large boulders with a square pit in the center. Vera Island 9 is a ritual site with two menhirs, and Vera Island 4 has a small menhir surrounded by vertical stones. What were ancient people up to over here? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed. Nybester Brach Nybester Brach has been called one of the most spectacular Iron Age settlements in northern Scotland by the Caithness Archaeological Trust but this could very well be an understatement. The area of Caithness was home to a lot of Iron Age communities in Scotland, and Nybester was one of its largest. It was built sometime around 700 BC, unique for its connecting passages between stone buildings. The settlement wasn't that large, but it was quite complex for its time. People lived here about a thousand years before Rome found its way to Britain and invaded it. Excavations of this ancient place began in the late part of the 19th century thanks to Sir Francis Tress Barry. One of the most notable and interesting things about this particular settlement is the combination of ancient remains from the Iron Age, which are circular in nature, and the memorial known as Mervyn's Tower, which was built with stones removed from the site as a memorial to the nephew of Sir Francis Tress Barry. The memorial is strangely decorated with gargoyles and plaques and stands in odd contrast to the rest of the site. Apart from building the odd memorial tower, he and his excavation team discovered stone tools, random metal objects, and lost pieces of pottery at the site. Pretty much the exact same stuff you'd expect to find in any ruined Scottish settlement. The major difference here is that Nybster Brach has been gradually destroyed because of coastal erosion. The people who built this settlement did so on the very edge of a cliff overlooking the ocean. Over thousands of years, the edge of the cliff has gotten shorter and shorter, meaning many parts of the mysterious settlement have already fallen into the water. Pre-Hispanic Mexico In Mexico, there is a new railway being installed on the Yucatan Peninsula. The railway is going to be fast, and it's going to zip people between the most important archaeological locations in the old territory of the Maya. But ahead of its construction, Archaeologists have been hard at work trying to preserve any ancient ruins that the construction of the railway might destroy. And they have found a lot of stuff. Archaeologists with the National Institute of Anthropology and History have found thousands of mysterious pre-Hispanic sites, including burial grounds and structures, many dated as far back as the year 700 BC. 
According to a statement given by the researchers, they have found earth mounds, extremely complicated stone architecture, and thousands of pieces of broken artifacts. These discoveries could reveal a lot about the daily life and trade of the Maya people. But so far, the team has only looked at the first 140 miles of the Maya train project, which goes on for over 950 miles. The first discoveries came near the ruins of Palenque, an ancient Maya city. What all this means is that hidden underground, hiding under trees, and maybe even sitting in plain sight are hundreds of lost settlements, villages, and secret temples that nobody has ever seen before. But unfortunately, the construction of this new train is probably going to cause them to be totally annihilated before any dedicated archaeologists even have a chance to study them. Cave of the Apocalypse The Patmos Cave of the Apocalypse has been called the most spiritual cave in the entire world. It's located about halfway to the monastery of Agios Loanis. It's a sacred grotto believed to be the exact place where Agios Loanis had a vision from Christ, which he went on to record in the Book of Revelation. In case you aren't totally up to speed on Christian history, Agios Loanis is sometimes referred to as the Apostle Loanis. He was exiled to the island of Patmos in Greece around the year 95 AD. It was there that he is said to have received revelations from God, spoken to him from a cleft in a rock. It was the Apostle Loanus in this cave, after he was exiled from his home by the Roman Emperor Domitian, who wrote the final book of the Bible, the Book of the Apocalypse. What is fascinating is that this isn't just some Christian fairy tale. The cave is very real and it's been a sanctuary for around 2,000 years. You can still see today the very spot where Loanus rested his head each night. According to the legend, he used a rock as a pillow, and that rock is still sitting in the cave. But of course, the big mystery is trying to figure out what truly did happen inside the Cave of the Apocalypse 2,000 years ago. Did Agios Loanus truly hear the voice of God from a rock, describing to him how exactly the world would end? Or, on the other hand, was he a hallucinating or manipulating man who wrote himself quite the fiction? Many believers use these writings today as a blueprint for how the world will end. Tomb Beneath the Temple Archaeologists conducting a survey at the Temple of Hatshepsut in Egypt have made an outstanding discovery in the form of a subterranean tomb. The temple itself was constructed during the 18th dynasty of Egypt, when the nation was under the rule of the female pharaoh Hatshepsut. Today, the Grand Temple can be found near the city of Luxor, still in shockingly good condition. It's one of the most picturesque temples in all of Egypt, built directly into the cliffs of Deir el-Bahari, with its three terraces looking as though they had just been finished yesterday. Part of the great preservation has to do with the efforts of an archaeological expedition that has been working since 1961 to conserve the temple. Polish archaeologists with the Center for Mediterranean Archaeology have been doing an amazing job. During recent restoration work, they found a tomb and a burial chamber. The burial chamber was discovered filled with debris, lots of broken artifacts, and it probably belonged to someone who was related to the pharaoh. But here's what makes it so interesting. Archaeologists found a lot of artifacts, dozens and dozens of figurines depicting everything from deities to cows. Dr. Chudzik, who was involved with the study, believes the items were probably thrown into the tomb by the staff at the temple. They would have been accepting offerings to the dead pharaoh, but probably wouldn't have had enough places to store them. So they simply used the tomb of one of the pharaoh's relatives as a giant garbage dump for offerings. An Ancient Warship Archaeologists have discovered an amazing and mysterious archaeological site on the coast of Riga, the capital of Latvia. The Latvian authorities were first alerted to the treasure by some local residents who found a chunk of a ship's hull poking through the sand at the beach. It's now believed that this strange ship has been sitting there for over 200 years. Archaeologists have removed over 36 feet of sand just to get a better glimpse of the ship, which is almost perfectly preserved. The reason the oak timbers have survived so long, despite being made of organic material, has to do with the sand. Being buried like that with very little access to oxygen allowed for the shipwreck to remain in awesome condition. The ship itself hasn't even been properly measured yet. There is so much sand that experts haven't been able to get a full view of the vessel. They don't even know exactly how old it is, 
and have had to make some educated guesses based on physical evidence. Evidence like the shape of the ship, some copper nails found in its hull, and some copper plating. The use of all the copper suggests the ship was built by the British sometime in the 1870s. It could have been a warship or a merchant vessel, but nobody has any idea. Latvian archaeologists are still working to fully excavate the ship and maybe even discover its cargo still intact. Men and Toll Men and Toll was built in the Bronze Age, making it roughly 3,500 years old. The reason the site is so exciting is that it's unique and one of a kind. It consists only of four giant stones, with one of them being a circular stone with a hole punched through its middle. The other three stones are ordinary granite pillars, just like any pillar that was used in dozens and even hundreds of stone circles across England and France. Men and Toll is hardly as exciting as Stonehenge, but it's fascinating in its own special way. It's the rock with the hole in its center that's really quite fascinating. The hole is about three feet across and was used in ancient rituals. The old people who lived here, descendants probably of the people who built Stonehenge, associated the hold stone with magical powers. They thought that if you had back pain, this stone could heal you. They also thought that they could heal a child suffering from rickets or tuberculosis using the stone. For the latter, you would take the naked child and pass them three times through the stone, at which point they were supposed to be cured. Though, of course, this probably didn't work. What do you think is the meaning behind this hold stone? Have you visited this ancient site? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe because we have lots more videos like these coming up. Roman Battlefield A hobby archaeologist made a shocking discovery that led real archaeologists to excavate a mysterious ancient battle site from ancient Roman times. The amateur archaeologist found an impressive ancient dagger over 2,000 years old. This prompted researchers with the University of Basel to go investigate. They then found more old relics such as stones from slingshots, a handful of coins, some random nails, and a piece of a shield. All these artifacts had been left behind after a clash between a local tribe and the advancing Romans around the year 15 BC. The battlefield is in the southeast corner of Switzerland, in a giant field that nobody would ever think had once been the scene of a massacre. Archaeologists believe the battle was fought between the forces of Rome and a local Raetian tribe. Peter Schwartz, who is associated with the research team, says it's the first time the remains of a Roman battle have ever been found in Switzerland. Probably 1,500 soldiers fought, which makes it a pretty small battle compared to others throughout Europe. But it may have been an extremely important battle. This was at a time when the Roman Emperor Augustus was trying to expand Roman control and bring the nearby mountain regions into the fold. Vanquishing these tribes, who the Romans saw as barbarians, was the first step into a great and all-powerful empire. Underground Etruscan Pyramids In Italy, a mysterious set of underground pyramids from the enigmatic Etruscan culture were recently found. To make things even more shocking, the remains of the pyramids were found underneath a wine cellar in the small city of Orvieto. The wine cellar is relatively new, but the archaeologists discovered an ancient set of stairs carved into the wall that led them underground. What they discovered was a series of caves carved like a pyramid, along with various tunnels hinting at even deeper structures below that have yet to be found. We are dealing with a lot of layers here. Keep in mind that the wine cellar was built sometime in the 20th century. Underneath the cellar were the remains of a medieval floor. Underneath that, there was a layer filled with artifacts dating all the way back to the 5th century BC. These artifacts were clearly left behind by the Etruscans, who built complex underground structures. But under the layer of artifacts is even more mystery just waiting to be discovered. Archaeologists are still busy tunneling beneath the wine cellar to see just how huge of a complex the Etruscans built. There could be multiple pyramidal structures still hiding underground, which only adds to the mystery of the Etruscans. The Etruscans were basically the first Romans. They are believed to have taught French people how to make wine, taught the Romans how to build roads, and were the first ones to write in Europe. They flourished in central Italy around the year 900 BC, dominated for 500 years, and then were completely wiped out or absorbed into the Roman Empire. Lost Fortress Archaeologists doing excavations in the Judean foothills of Israel 
have discovered a Hellenistic fortress that was probably destroyed during a battle 2100 years ago. According to the Israel Antiquities Authority, their archaeologists have found coins, weapons, and charred wooden beams in this mysterious fortress. The charred beams would suggest that the fortress succumbed to fire and was burned down during an attack by the Seleucids. Here's a bit of background. 2,100 years ago, Judea was ruled by the Hasmoneans. Modern scholars believe this was the first independent kingdom of Israel in history. However, things weren't quite peaceful. The region was under the iron thumb of Hellenistic rule, with the Seleucid dynasty being in control at this time. When they initiated anti-Jewish decrees, the Hasmoneans rebelled and fought back. The Hellenistic forces had erected a line of protection to protect the city of Marisha. This newly discovered fortress had probably been part of that defensive line. But judging by the evidence of burning, it would appear the Judean rebel forces tore through the fortifications like a bull through paper, going on to overthrow their suppressors and rule their own kingdom. Scythian Treasures In Russia, a mysterious gravesite dating back 2400 years has been discovered. Well, it's less of an individual gravesite and more of a necropolis, an entire cemetery of tombs that still hold the bodies of ancient Scythian warriors. The Scythians were nomadic people who lived in what they call Scythia. Today, this area comprises many parts of Kazakhstan, Siberia, and even pieces of Ukraine. But what's truly interesting about the Scythians is that they didn't leave behind any written history, and they never built any cities. Their entire culture is a mystery, with what little we know about them being based on writings from other civilizations like the Greeks and the Assyrians. The only physical link we have to these lost people comes in the form of buried treasure discovered in tombs. In this necropolis, graves have yielded impressive artifacts that could teach us more about Scythia. Archaeologists have found things like silver plates decorated with strange gods and hybrid animals. It would appear they had a very complicated mythology, complete with unknown gods and fantastic beasts that we know literally nothing about. Thanks for watching! Which archaeological place would you love to visit the most if given the chance? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and be sure to check out the hundreds of videos we have on the channel. See you later! Bye!